I think I've come to terms that the most tragic fate a series can actually go through is that of the fall off. I feel like the experience of an anime falling off is 10 times worse than like your anime being trash or your anime being mid. Because at least if your anime is trash, like you can come to terms like, hey, this shit's kind of... It's just kind of cheeks. But seeing one of your faves like succeeding, killing the games, killing other people's faves, just living life at its finest, and then suddenly just eating shit, puking all over itself, making a, a bloody mess. Just, just nasty shit. So guys and gals, we will be looking at anime's biggest fall offs of all time using none other than my trusty PowerPoint slide. Cue the slide. I, I love this shit. I haven't even edited the video yet. I don't even know how that turned out. That shit's fire, right? Come on, come on. Now to start off, we really just need to get a good base of like what really is a true fall off. Because I feel like some of the anime y'all be talking about that fell off is not really falling off like that. I think it's kind of unfair to expect the exact same quality out of every single season of anime every single time. And whenever people see like even slightly a dip, they start to flip out. Oh, oh, it's falling off. Oh, oh no. My favorite series, like, relax, I right? It's not that serious. But there could be many reasons on why your anime fell off. Reason number one, the animation quality could have just taken a dumpy, a little poopy. This is a very common one. It's very sad to see, but it happens all the time. A studio change can be pretty drastic. Even if the studio is a really good studio for the anime, people just get flustered whenever they see change, you know? And, and the last one could be, like, just pacing and the plot adjustments. To this day, I still don't know the need for studios to drastically change the source material for whatever reasons they choose. The only times where I feel like it makes a lot more sense if it's like a long running show, you're trying to like spread it out a little bit, you don't want to catch to the source material, that's, that's fine. I, I understand you, I'm not getting mad. But you have like 12 episode shows, and it's doing some bullshit. I'm sorry. So to properly break down these anime falls, I'm going to be breaking them down into three different categories. And the first one that we're going to be going over is the fake fall off. And for this example, we're going to be using three major anime that I feel have suffered the result of the fake fall off. These are anime that are notoriously talked about and not being the same level of quality or not the same level of hyped as when they first came out. And honestly, People are over-exaggerating. That's all I'm going to say. Starting off with the one and only coming out of 2023, we talking about... Attack on Titan. I honestly think Attack on Titan might be one of the most fascinating anime ever when it just comes to public opinion. I, I, I feel like Attack on Titan has taken so many forms of hype and disengagement and just like hate and, and love at the same time. We start off with like a season one that kind of like kickstarted this whole renaissance of anime where it's kind of blowing up and shit. Season two where they waited four years to drop so nobody really gave a fuck about it. Season three where like the first part people were like, oh shit, no action, but it's kind of gas. Then season three part two and people were like, oh shit, oh action, kind of gas, this is the best part. And then season four comes out and the, and the game just, just changed. They changed the studio and now people are like going online, writing like hate letters to animators because Mikasa looks like a dude or some shit like come on bro like, like this is this is insane people are like clipping parts of the episode like complaining about roller scope and the cgi not being as good as wit even though that's not true the cgi was pretty ass at wit and even though i think overall i think wit's adaptation of attack on titan might have been a little stronger than that of mappa's it's like hey hey i i want a steak and you gave me shrimp scampi i hate you wow ah. Fuck you, ah. I want a steak. I'm like, well, shut up, shut up. And then you drop the ending. Oh. Here, here's the thing about that Attack on Titan ending, right? Is this ending controversial in nature? For sure. Um, I don't think you can debate that. Is this ending good? I don't know. Yeah, 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 I don't know. But do we think this ending is so appalling that it discredits all of the events that happened prior to this moment? Now, this is not going to be a Attack on Titan ending analysis and you might not want to take my words for fact honestly you're kind of listening to an attack on titan apologist right now but the fact of the matter is attack on titan is still one of the most booming and popular series of all time all the manga readers that thought the ending was trash still went to watch the anime after even though it was the same exact shit and honestly overall this is not going to affect people watching attack on titan re-watching attack on titan people cosplaying as attack on titan characters buying the merch it's still one of the hypest and most influential series of all of anime so in this case i deem attack on titan as a fake fall off <sighs> next up on the list we're gonna go with death note y'all y'all should know what i'm about to say man the second half of the anime ain't even that bad 
it really ain't now does the second half of death note stop death note from being like a potentially like 10 out of 10 perfect series yeah I i'd say that but do you ever see people not recommend death note as like one of the greatest starter anime of all time how i view it i feel like the first part of death note is probably like close to a 10 out of 10 maybe a 9 out of 10 if you want to be kind of picky and the second half is probably like more of like 7 a 7.5 it's a little average it's a little whatever you know i don't think it's stupid but it's kind of eh. i think if the second half was by itself people wouldn't complain nearly as much but in the shadow of the first part it, it's, it's kind of tough it's kind of tough but i would still deem the final episode as really really strong and overall this is a fake fall off because the hype for a death note as a whole didn't really fall off it's still deemed as one of the greatest of all time and is an anime classic what more can i say last one of the fake fall offs we're gonna go with the raced this is a tough one man this is this is a tough one this plot reveal in this show hurt me on different levels i ain't gonna hold you at first i didn't think it was that bad then it started to soak a little bit i'm like really really now this is also one of the cases where i feel like the manga probably did it a little better than the anime and that's on the studio itself a1 what they wanted to put in the show pacing it so they get all the episodes out that was just a creative decision on the studio but even besides this i still think a race is like one of the best anime that came out during the 2010s one of a1's best works one of the best thriller animes in the genre and it's not even like the reveal itself is that bad it was just really the execution and again if you were really that curious on how they would have done it better you can just read the manga fake fall off but hey we're going past those we're hopping into the next category guys and gals we're hopping into the soft fall offs plushies bears koalas these are anime that i for sure feel have fallen off to extent from their previous prime not saying they're like in the mud or anything or they can't like recover or they'll never be good again because I'm, I'm not saying that because some of these are like kind of popular hey but these anime for sure in my opinion have just fell from the glory that they wore once at a point but this first one's gonna hurt me i'm gonna be honest i'm a big stan i'm a big fan we going with my hero academia now before i just start dicking on this series because i'm about to put my dick on the table right now i might be one of the biggest my hero academia glazers that you'll probably see this week, this used to be a My Hero Academia channel. I privated those videos. You don't have to look at them. They're pretty bad. But this is my baby when it comes to shonen anime and manga. I love this show with all my heart. And I will defend it until I cannot defend it anymore. And in this case, it's gotten pretty bad. I'm blaming the anime for the most part. I'm going to be honest. Bones, I got a bone to pick with you. You saw that? You saw that? Not only did you take one of the hypest arcs of all of My Hero Academia, being the overhaul arc in season four and make it mid, but you followed it with season five, which is even worse. That season four to season five run has killed me to this day. I cannot forgive you, Bones. We are not friends. You know, at first, I just couldn't put my finger on why the overhaul arc was just so bad in the anime. Obviously, like animation at points was a big thing. The pacing overall, felt a little odd in comparison to the manga and overall the tension as a whole just wasn't there for me and even though i think the climax and the ending of the overhaul arc was a highlight we have like fights like the muriel versus overhaul fight just getting totally just bitched on like bones i i, I cannot forget you for that fight that's when i knew they turned it into a powerpoint slide this shit that i have behind me right now is what they did to muriel versus overall mirio is now seen as a bum i'm looking at you bones you can't really do much about the gentle arc people didn't really like it in the manga that much and people also just felt the same way in the anime even though i don't think it's that bad i'm gonna be honest hey that's just me though then you get to season five and they just started like smoking crack i don't know what they were doing class one a versus class one b again it's just an arc that people just aren't a big fan of i don't think they handled it bad or anything if anything i think they handled it better than the manga but even still you can't really do much with the arc that just already isn't a favorite and then they just started to do some like switch rule type shit like never in my hero academia they just switch the arcs up for no apparent reason pro hero arc in my hero academia are just switched now you you take one of the best arcs in all of my hero academia when it's supposed to be like the breaker between like the bad run of the overhaul arc that you guys botched the gentle arc and then class 1a and class 1b and then instead you do the pro hero arc and the plot points don't make sense anymore because you switched up the fucking timeline and you give us my villain academia and to be fair some of the moments kind of kino kind of gas but then you just have like some shit 
some shit animation. And I'm not gonna even say the adaptation was was the worst ever. But after doing the switcheroo shit that you just did, don't do that. Don't ever do that again. Now, is it still one of my favorite, if not my favorite, new gen Shonen? Yes. But I can't be biased. That shit kind of fell off. Spy X Family, this is one of the reasons why I made this video, I'm gonna be honest. This season, nobody was peeping. Okay. Relax. I wasn't peeping along with many other people in the anime community Because it fell off now nah, it didn't fall off that hard and I honestly don't think they could have done anything better because Spy X Family I think Spy Family does what it does incredibly well. It's a comedy series. It's lighthearted. It's wholesome It's episodic and I honestly just think the way the anime community is right now just doesn't feed this type of show as much love as it deserves. I think people are just so into this like heavy plots, meaty characterization, and those heftier series. And I think Spy Family really succeeded in the beginning because it was super unique, it was super original. We have like people making spin-offs and copies of it already. But once you kind of like step back and it's not really this new and fascinating new concept anymore, it's a cool episodic comedy series but i also think they also just shoved too much spy family in your face as well it only came out like what like two years ago but you already have like two seasons in a movie which for most series that's like really good you want as much as you can but when the content itself isn't that different when it comes to like a day-to-day -day episode i don't know it's kind of just overexposure at that point that's my take at least i don't think the comedy got worse i don't think the animation got bad i don't think they could have done anything better i think shit just happens sometimes last but not least dr stone Kind of in the same boat as Spy X Family. It's probably the most successful educational anime I've probably ever seen in my life. That gets old after season one. I'm gonna be honest. Now, there are some diehard Dr. Stone fans, and I will not combat you guys. You guys got it. Just one of those shows where, like, I appreciate it in the background. It makes sense why it was popping when it first came out. Because it was new. It was unique. It changed the vibe a little bit. But once you get in the rhythm of it, and you start, like, singing it over and over and over you're just tired yeah i don't want to spend time slandering a series that i really don't hate i just don't think this type of series fits the anime fandom at this current stage of the world all right guys we're getting to the meat and potatoes we're going to be talking about the fall offs you, you can't get worse than this shit and to start off just so i'm being fair we're starting off with the one and only uh one of my favorites of all time guys and gals um If you guys don't know, this used to be a Tokyo Avengers channel for the most part. Oh, man. The Tokyo Avengers fall off should be documented. It's like Tokyo Avengers and the baby. Anomalies, man. This is like a double fall off. It's like not only did the manga fall off, but then the anime started to follow suit for no apparent reason. Uh, like when you look at the anime, you take a show that already had like kind of mediocre animation and then you just start like shoving it in niggas faces. They released them past like two seasons in like the past year so they're not even like spending time like trying to like upgrade the animation or upgrade the way they're trying to adapt the series they're just pushing it in our face and these are the greatest arcs ever and literally nobody was talking about it. these are literally the fan favorites people were literally waiting for season three for years and it comes out and nobody gives a fuck you already have like linden films doing tokyo avengers for some odd apparent reason they don't do battle series that's not their specialty how they pick up Tokyo Avengers? Who, who let this slide? And if you're an international fan, they took it off of Crunchyroll. Honestly, I don't know if this is me, but when an anime is not on Crunchyroll, there's a 50% chance that I'm not watching anymore unless it's like that gas. And then you just have the manga, which started just doing some bullshit. And even though I'm saying this, I do feel like the Tokyo Avengers manga isn't as bad as people try to make it out to be. It's pretty bad. But I, I think it's not the end of the world. People were like kind of over exaggerating on how shit the arc is. Like it's like some unreadable pile of just garbo. Sure, do I think the execution of a lot of the major plot points in Tokyo Avengers were handled well? No. Do I think the ideas behind it were good? A lot of them. Some of them not really. Again, this is me not, not reading the final chapter. They still have some of the craziest deaths in the final arc. Some of the most like wild and like just like out of this world plot reveals that I just didn't think were gonna happen. And there were still a lot of solid fights. But even though they have all this shit, there's all this shit that nobody can get over because it is pretty bad. I ain't gonna hold you. I can't get over it either. Promise Nevelyn. I'm even rocking the shirt today, man. Just out of my condolences. The adaptation of the Promised Neverland anime is a fate that I would not wish on any anime fan. 
unless you're an Evangelion fan, then fuck you. I honestly don't know how a team of individuals all came to the same conclusion that just omitting one of the best arcs in Promised Neverland and pretending that it just didn't happen and just speed racing through the rest of the manga was going to end up positive in any sense any sense of the word it doesn't make sense if you just want to finish it because the manga ended already just don't do it or just do a second season and don't make a third but you just don't have to make this bs amalgamation of just events that happened in this chaotic and random order out of anything on this list i think season two of promise Land might be the worst adaptation i have ever seen out of a manga maybe berserk 2016 i don't know but i don't know. i might take back what i said about promise neverland seven deadly sins Shit. at least the quality of promise neverland didn't fall off that hard when it comes to the manga and the animation wasn't that bad in the anime this shit right here Ugh. This is like the worst case scenario when you hear your studio getting changed because they can just start bullshitting. If they know that this franchise already has like hit potential, people are already gonna like buy all this shit, they actually have the option to do what Seven Deadly Sins did and just pump out shit and not give a fuck. This combined with the actual story going to absolute shit is, is disgusting. What, what was he cooking with this panel? Keep your hands off my woman. Why? Why did he write this? Why did he why did he draw this panel? And y'all seen the gifts of the anime and the fights and the fucking everything. And for some apparent reason, this is like one of those shows that have like a thousand spin-offs and CGI shit and they're still pushing it out. People are still somehow watching Seven Daily Sins. And I understand where the hype was when it comes to Seven Daily Sins. This is again one of those anime that came out like around My Hero Academia post naruto people looking for new like shonen's battle things to watch people were, like gassing this up like oh it's the next fairy tone and shit it had a lot of momentum in that first and second season for all of it to kind of just go downhill it's, it's truly tragic from both a manga and an anime perspective this is just a double whammer of just ass cheeks buns oh boy tokyo ghoul ah this is this is these are getting rough, man. These are getting rough. Season one already was just a passable anime adaptation. Like, they didn't kill it, um, but it was good enough for it to, like, jet sail into this big, big anime. Um, the opening was really fire. The aesthetic was really cool. Um, it really just took over the early 10s. And literally, the mangaka of Tokyo Ghoul gave Periot a outline of how to do season two, and they did not give a fuck. They decided to make this super big shift when it comes to the plot and the execution of it just made no fucking sense and they even knew they fucked up because they tried to make Tokyo Ghoulry and when they made it they pretended that season two didn't happen that's how you know they fucked up if you are anime only i could only imagine the amount of confusion you could have gone through when you had season three come out like Kaneki's having backstories and backflashes of events that you've never seen in the anime before so unless you read the manga you quite literally cannot watch season three and season four of Tokyo Ghoulry so in theory you're making this anime for the manga fans who already don't fuck with you because you fucked up their series in season one and season two this shit is just this is stupid it's just stupid last but not least we're gonna go into a coming got kill this is one of the few cases and we're killing your characters actually hurt the series i've actually never seen this before and this honestly a product of a studio trying to make an anime and finish it before the manga finishes because the manga didn't finish until like years later from the anime so they kind of just like hey we're just, just gonna do it we want to keep killing them they're gonna go we're getting them out we're getting them out it was really like a death a week at a certain point i'm like bro like what am i even watching anymore <laughs> like all the tension's gone you already know what kind of what's gonna happen i think first episode wise i still think it's one of, like the strongest starts when it comes to anime and i think the power system and the care designs were so unique and so refreshing for the time and i don't know how the manga ended up it probably was better than how the anime was but i think they should have just done the first season and just not finished the whole story and just not done a season two or just wait for the actual manga to finish because there's no point i i do get pretty upset when shows don't get a season two or a season three or whatever sequel they need um, but if they're just gonna botch it anyways don't give it to me 
that's all i'm gonna say but guys and guys that's gonna be the video um these were the biggest falls of anime they're gonna be some honorable mentions i think like psycho pass is one uh, one punch man season two is one but leave the anime falls that you feel were the worst for you in the comment section below thank you guys for watching once again guys and gals happy 2024 these were my blank thoughts